Elden Ring has been highly anticipated since its announcement back at E3 2019, and now after two years, we finally got a taste of that sweet Soulsborne goodness we've been aching for, as well as falling in love with our new ceramic waifu, Potboy. Elden Ring is by far the most ambitious game from software have attempted to date, with the lore of the game being written by Game of Thrones architect himself, George R. R. Martin, and the introduction of open world mechanics into an otherwise much more focused gameplay genre. It's like Breath of the Wild and Dark Souls had a deeply unsettling baby. Now, comparing any open world game to Breath of the Wild has become its own cliche at this point. We do understand, but we are curious how an open world structure can get the best out of a series which focuses so much on perfectly orchestrated challenge. This precision in design is integrated deep into the gameplay loops, the level design, enemy behaviours, etc. of this genre, so how can From Software translate this identity into a format that's much more expansive and rooted in player agency? Well, hop onto your spirit horse, my tarnished friends, let's have some fun and explore this. You Died, a TED Talk. To the uninitiated who don't understand the seemingly self-hating enjoyment of Soulsborne games, let me quickly fill you in. In a Soulsborne game, you must traverse a dark and depressing world filled with unfair traps and punishing mechanics, where you must battle enemies and bosses that are often a lot stronger and faster than you. Every engagement is brutal, and the odds feel stacked against you. You're going to die, and die a lot. The enjoyment of these games comes from the initial struggle of a new enemy or situation, but then rising above that challenge and conquering it. In short, triumph over extreme adversity. In a market of games which often makes you feel overpowered to the point where you can just sit back, grab some popcorn, and watch your character murder everyone as if on rails, Soulsborne games say, nah fam, you groveling little maggot, you hollowed little sewer rat, you can't relax, you are going to pay attention to me, or you're going to have you died burnt into your retinas. It might sound brutal, but oh my god, it is so damn good. It's so good because the struggle and challenge of these games is perfect perfectly balanced, so the challenge never feels too difficult to be off-putting, well, maybe sometimes, but it's also never too easy to be boring. It's like a perfectly balanced yoga pose of a game, yet it hurts, but in the best way. It's never boring because you do things like fight frogs with human skulls, for example. That'll keep you on your toes. This balancing act sinks its claws into every aspect of Soulsborne games. The combat, the health system, the upgrade system, and the world itself. Often in Soulsborne games, the world will branch off into multiple directions, so the world will seemingly feel open and give you the freedom to do whatever you want, but much like treasure chests in Dark Souls or Cake from Portal, that's a lie. Certain areas of the game are restricted until you find certain key items, so the game always pushes you down a predetermined path to make sure you're never completely overwhelmed. This is much more akin to a Metroidvania structure, albeit with body horror. As well as this, some branching paths will present an enemy which is reasonably difficult and another which will have you crying into your controller and praying for forgiveness all to make sure that the player is never completely discouraged and is progressing through the game at a palatable rate. Soulsborne level design says, Oi, eat this spicy chilli. You'll have to eat an even spicier chilli afterwards, but only after earning your glass of milk. Open world in Elden Ring, on paper, sounds like a great idea, but if you can go anywhere at any time, how are From Software going to balance the tailored experience that makes these games so enjoyable with open-ended exploration? Death of the Wild. Okay, hear me out. In an open world, if I decide to shoot off towards a cool looking castle in the distance on my spirit horse, I could end up in an area where I'm completely underpowered and I end up being slaughtered constantly. It's gonna feel too frustrating and I'm gonna end up spending two weeks in the bath trying to unwind. Or, conversely, what if I travel to places which are just full of basic skeleton enemies who I can mash through with complete ease? Well, that could feel pretty unengaging and I'm gonna have to flick on Animal Crossing to get a more taxing hardcore experience. The perfect tailored experience of a Soulsborne game could be somewhat destroyed by the open world if not done correctly. We understand the appeal of open world mechanics is to let players explore a dynamic setting and to give players complete freedom to create their own sense of play, but this change could alter the From Software recipe too much and then we're left with a dubious food-like experience of mismatched difficulty. With that said, From Software are some of the best developers in the world and surely they're aware of all these challenges too, so let's explore how they're going to make this all work. 
Well, for starters, the world would need to heavily suggest a route not to take. Much like in Breath of the Wild, actually. Breath of the Wild lets you go wherever you want, straight away. You can fight the final boss if you want, but if you try to, you'll be ripped to shreds because you're completely underpowered. Creator Hidetaka Miyazaki revealed in a recent interview that Elden Ring isn't just going to suggest a certain route for the player, but it is also going to restrict certain areas early in the game. Once they get past the beginning, there's a suggested route to the game, but you're still free to explore a poison swamp or two if you like. This sounds like a great compromise because it will instill that familiar progression of the previous titles while giving you that dynamic freedom of an open world, albeit in a more curated way. Once you've got past the beginning, have a go at this fire-breathing lightning chucking dragon. You'll still probably die, but at least you can go back to the root. Another thing that maintains the difficulty balance in other RPGs, which is the most simple, is level scaling. Making basic enemies tougher as the player becomes stronger is always going to feel more balanced. They even pulled off a version of this in Bloodborne with the Blood Moon, which made basic enemies pretty menacing at the end of the game. With Elden Ring having a day and night cycle, we might see something more substantial, like a difficulty increase in the latter part of the game. A combination of these two methods would definitely keep that Soulsborne struggle alive, whilst effectively using the open world for its own joys. But the thing that convinces us the most that Elden Ring will nail open world is the inclusion of interconnected dungeons. Oh baby, this gets me excited for two reasons. One, that sweet feeling when you end up finding a shortcut and it links back to a previously explored area, it felt so good in the previous titles, it felt like I was a little kid lost in the forest, but then I walked through some trees and I actually found my mum. That, on an open world scale, is going to feel mind-blowing. And secondly, this is literally the best way to put in that linear difficulty curve that we've been referencing for the whole video. The world, known as the Lands Between, has six main areas, each with their own mainline dungeon and a demigod boss at the end who will undoubtedly be brutal and absolute nightmare fuel. So there's going to be ample amounts of that triumph over extreme adversity as you progress through these dungeons. Then, once that dungeon is done, you're connected to the next one. Obviously, this being a Soulsborne game, it'll probably be a random NPC rambling about a dreaded creature that eclipses the moon nearby, which pushes you towards the next area. But it's still interconnected nonetheless. This gentle curation gets me so damn excited, because because Elden Ring will give players the freedom to explore the world how they see fit, but if you listen closely and pay attention to the surroundings, then you can still get that classic Soulsborne experience. So, to answer the question, can open world work in a Soulsborne game? Absolutely. From Software knows why people play these games, and in every entry they have mastered this formula, so it would be insane to go against the spirit of what makes these games so good. Zelda, before they went open world, followed a quite similar formula to the Soulsborne games, or I should say the other way around, and their open world experiment didn't just go well, it was the most successful thing that happened to the series and is lauded as one of the best games of all time. Breath of the Wild's existence means that Elden Ring can thrive too, but in a Soulsborne way, which means tormenting us and making us wish we picked up something more relaxing, like Bee Simulator instead. From what we've seen of the game so far, we're incredibly optimistic. Don't get us wrong, this seems like a hugely ambitious challenge, marrying the biggest and most dynamic world ever seen in a Soulsborne game with its trademark tailored difficulty seems like it might be a heroic undertaking. But you know, that challenge itself is what Soulsborne games are all about. You're one of us now from software. You're a hallowed dragon rotted tarnished maggot just like us. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments section below. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing and we can't wait to see you guys next time.